Today's topic is pheochromocytoma. To understand the lecture better, we have already published videos about adrenal glands, catecholamines, and neuroendocrine tumors. The links are in the description of this video. So pheochromocytoma is a tumor that arises from chromaffin cells present in the adrenal medulla or paraganglion cells. This is the adrenal gland. The outer part is the cortex and the inner part is the medulla. Paragangliomas are neuroendocrine neoplasms derived from paraganglia of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. They can arise in any location where paraganglia normally reside. This figure illustrates the location of normal paraganglia in the neck, thorax, and abdomen. In 90% of the cases, pheochromocytoma is sporadic, but in 10% of patients, it is familial and associated with syndromes like von Hebel-Lindau syndrome, type 1 neurofibromatosis, and multiple endocrine neoplasia syndromes, type 2A and B, with an autosomal dominant mode of transmission. Pheochromocytoma is a rare neuroendocrine disorder. Its incidence is about 0.1 to 0.3% in the hypertensive population. Its incidence is equal in both genders. It's usually diagnosed between the age of 30 to 50, but pheochromocytoma due to genetic predisposition can present earlier. Pheochromocytoma is a catecholamine secreting neuroendocrine tumor. It is one of the three types based on secreting catecholamine. It may be norepinephrine secreting tumor or epinephrine secreting tumor or both norepinephrine and epinephrine secreting tumor. Tumors secrete only norepinephrine usually presents with sustained hypertension. Norepinephrine and epinephrine secreting tumor presents with paroxysmal hypertension. Only epinephrine can cause hypotension instead of hypertension. Macroscopically, pheochromocytoma is encapsulated and appears brown to yellow and soft. It comprises of cystic degeneration, patches of necrosis, or hemorrhage. This is the cut surface of a nephrectomy specimen, demonstrating a large mass replacing the adrenal gland. It is heterogeneous with areas of hemorrhage. There is no evidence of invasion into the kidney or adjacent tissues. Histopathological examination shows that pheochromocytoma is composed of large basophilic cells assembled as a nest. The cytoplasm comprises multiple granules with many large pleomorphic and bizarre nuclei. Pheochromocytoma can be asymptomatic and diagnosed by further workup of an adrenal incident taloma. It can present with vague symptoms like headache, palpitations, and diaphoresis that can lead to a paroxysmal hypertensive crisis due to increased catecholamine production. Other associated symptoms include pallor, nausea, tremor, trembling, fatigue, anxiety, fever, pain, and flushing. Characteristically, these symptoms are paroxysmal and may be precipitated by abdominal exertion such as heavy lifting or performing the Valsalva maneuver. Almost 90% of the population with pheochromocytoma has hypertension. Pheochromocytoma follows the rule of 10. 10% of the tumors are malignant, 10% are extra-adrenal, 10% are bilateral, 10% are extra-abdominal, 10% are familial, 10% are pediatric, and 10% are without hypertension. Pheochromocytoma can also cause hyperglycemia, lactic acidosis, and weight loss. If there is clinical suspicion of a pheochromocytoma, then initial assessment starts with biochemical laboratory testing. Plasma-free metanephrine or 24-hour urinary fractionated metanephrine testing is recommended. Both can be done as an initial screen. The sensitivity is almost the same between these two biochemical tests, but there is a difference in the specificity. The plasma test is more specific than a urine test. Urinary vanillin mandolic acid is also used, but it is not as sensitive. 
amphetamines, ephedrine, tricyclic antidepressants, and cocaine can affect plasma and urine metanephrine levels. Therefore, abstinence of these substances has been suggested prior to these biochemical tests. It is recommended that the clinician collect plasma samples on ice with the patient in a supine position and in a fasting state to decrease the incidence of false positive results. Once metanephrine levels are fourfold high from the normal reference value, then the next goal is to localize the hormone secreting tumor. The problem arises when the metanephrine levels are minimally elevated or equivocal. In that circumstance, the clonidine suppression test can help with the diagnosis. In this test, a baseline specimen for plasma catecholamines is collected and clonidine hydrochloride is given orally. Blood for catecholamines is again collected at 180 minutes. Failure to suppress plasma catecholamines indicates autonomous release from a tumor. CT scan or MRI can be used for localizing the tumor. In certain conditions like pregnancy, contrast allergy, and the pediatric population, MRI should be done instead of a CT scan. These imaging modalities are sensitive but not specific. MIBG skintigraphy is very specific for catecholamine secreting tumors. It is not only helpful in differentiating between adrenal and paraganglionic tumor, but also helps in revealing multiple lesions and metastases. PET scan is superior to MIBG, especially in the evaluation of metastatic disease. So far, genetic testing depends on a case-to-case -case basis and shared decision-making. Indications for genetic testing include a family history of catecholamine-producing tumor, age less than 50 years, multiple tumors at different sites, metastases, or bilateral tumors. The gold standard treatment of fibromocytoma is surgical resection. An interprofessional team is required for management. It is mandatory to block catecholamine effect before surgery to prevent hypertensive crisis and arrhythmias, even in patients who are normotensive or asymptomatic. There is no particular preference for one drug over another to prevent hypertensive crisis. Any alpha adrenoceptor antagonist, a calcium channel blocker, or angiotensin receptor blocker can be used. Calcium channel blockers or beta adrenergic blockers are indicated for the prophylactic treatment of arrhythmias. The surgical technique depends on the size and site of the tumor. Usually tumors less than 10 cm are removed by laparoscopic surgery. If there is bilateral disease, then selective adrenal medulla surgery is suggested to prevent the use of lifelong glucocorticoids, but this technique also increases the risk of recurrence. Thanks for watching this video. You may like to watch other videos in this playlist. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not done yet.